Hello teachers, today we are going to talk about a concept in chemistry that is very important, acids and bases. This particular concept talks about the properties of substances that are all around us. And because we have chosen a lot of day-to-day -day chemicals to work with, I have put in a lot of activities into this lesson for us to discuss today. Before we start this lesson, it is nice to discuss about elements, compounds, atomic structures and bonds with the students. This concept talks a lot about the properties of substances and hence the chemical structure lays a very important foundation for this lesson. To start with, I staged an experiment like a magic trick. I had arranged five empty beakers on the table. I asked one of my students to pass me some water and I poured it in the first beaker. The color didn't change and my students started laughing because they thought the trick had failed. But when I poured this water in the second beaker, it turned pink. The students were really amazed to see this and I could hear the excitement from all the corners of the classroom. When I poured this water into the next beakers, the colors went on changing. This happened because the first beaker had a bit of NaOH, the second one had a bit of phenolphthalein and the third one had a bit of HCl and so on. The colors in the beakers went on changing because of the changing pH of the solution. You can ask the students what they expect would happen and see their excitement when they see the magic trick happen in front of them. This will spark curiosity and increase the anticipation of the students. And now that we have engaged them into discussion, we can start talking about acids, bases and indicators. We discussed the definitions and properties of acids and bases first. In order to understand indicators, we decided to test how various substances reacted with turmeric. We dissolved some turmeric in water and took household items like tamarind, garlic, salt, soap, baking soda, vinegar, lemon, etc. for testing. We took turmeric solution in different flasks and then tested all of these substances one by one. I asked my students to divide these substances into two groups, one which turned the turmeric solution red and one which did not. This helped them understand the difference between acids and bases and distinctly talk about their properties. I had asked them to note down their observations and explain their observations with reasoning. If possible, repeat this activity with different indicators like the universal indicator and see how the color changes for different substances. A universal indicator will give you an array of colors for different substances which makes the distinction between weak and strong acids and bases even more clearer. This activity helped us understand the differences in the properties of acids and bases, understand their occurrence in nature and find out the role of an indicator to determine acidity and basicity. Linking the strengths of the acids and bases using an indicator, we can now talk about pHs. pH is again a very difficult concept for the students to understand. Because to understand the pH, the students need to understand molarity, concentration and the logarithmic scale. Before we even start with the definition, I had to make sure that the concept of number line is clear to the students. It can be done by simply drawing a number line on the blackboard. Now, we can take an arbitrary start position and ask the students the number of steps required to move towards zero. It is important to emphasize on the number of steps taken here since it will help us later in the discussion. Since the concept of moving on a number line is clear now, I introduce them to the concept of pH. After going over the definition of pH, I emphasized the implications of it being a logarithmic function, that the pH scale itself is not linear which means that jumping from one number to another is a non-linear distance. To explain this further, I illustrated it with the help of rice grains. Here, each rice grain corresponds to the concentration of H plus ions. Say we have an H plus ion concentration, 
that corresponds to one rice grain in pH 7. Then in pH 6 we have 10 and in pH 5 we have a hundred rice grains. Now imagine what pH 4, 3, 2, 1 or 0 would look like in this analogy. Now that we discussed pH, we then started investigating the pH of different substances around us. For this, we used the indicator made out of red cabbage. We made this indicator in the school kitchen, but if you don't have a kitchen in the school, you can make it and then bring it to the school and distribute it to the students. It is a lot of fun to make this indicator with the students as well. To make the red cabbage indicator, chop the red cabbage into fine pieces and boil it in a vessel with water. Filter this solution and cool it. Now, we can use this to test pH of various substances. To have a reference scale, we had some previously prepared buffer solutions of pH 1 to pH 14. These helped us to find the reference color for red cabbage indicator. Students were very very curious to find the pH of substances that were around them. They were bringing in substances like different cleaning supplies, soaps, milk, muddy water, tap water, salt solution. It was very exciting to see them bring different substances from all over the school to test the pH off. After this, I asked them what happens if acids and bases react. At this point, it is a good idea to bring up the introductory activity of magic beakers. We can reason the observations and try to understand why we saw what we saw in that activity. In order to show acid-base neutralization, we used a micro scale experiment. Herein, we added a few drops of dilute HCl in the marked circle on the left half of the paper. We can add some dilute NaOH in a marked circle in the right half of the paper. Add a few drops of universal indicator in the middle where both solutions meet on the paper. I asked the students to observe the different colors on the paper and to infer what happens as acids and bases mix. Questions like, what do you observe? Which substances are reacting in this activity? Can we write a chemical reaction and find out what is being produced? Kept the discussion going and the students were eager to share their findings. To conclude, we have to make sure that the students have become well versed with the concept of acids, bases and neutralization. For this, we can ask them questions about what is pH, what is the pH of common salt or different substances around them. We can also make kitchen supplies or bathroom supplies available to them to test pHs off. Uh, they can also dip pH paper or litmus paper into these solutions to find the pH of these substances. It is important to have a discussion about the structure of acids and bases and correlate it with their properties for better understanding. I hope you liked this activity based lesson plan. A detailed plan is given in the description of this video. Please take a look at it and try to perform these activities in your classroom and share your experiences with us. Thank you.